But there are a couple situations which may necessitate a more detailed cleaning and disassembly of your nozzle and proportioner. One of those situations might be when you're on an incident and you simply can't get your nozzle or proportioner to work properly. Another situation might be where when you're performing your annual or seasonal inspection and when you look inside your proportioner or inside your nozzle, you see large quantities of dried concentrate. In both of those situations, it'd be a good idea to completely disassemble, clean, and then reassemble your nozzle and proportioner. So let's get started. To begin with, I like to work on a clean towel on a bench surface. We're going to be dealing with things like ball bearings and we're going to be making a little bit of a mess. So it's nice to have something to catch all of that. All right, we're going to need a set of Allen wrenches, a pair of forceps, a prying tool, which could be a screwdriver or a pick, and some WD-40. And with that, we're ready to get started. The first component that we're going to disassemble is the proportioner. I've removed this proportioner from this nozzle. And to begin with, we will remove the set screw on the selector side. And there's nothing holding these set screws in place, no thread lock or anything like that. They come out pretty easily. And once removed, we just want to set that aside. The next thing we're going to do is remove the retainer bearings. As you'll see, many of the components on the proportioner and the nozzle are actually held together by these retainer bearings. The retainer bearings are removed through the set screw hole. Now sometimes there can be some dried concentrate or other material in the bearing space. And if you can't get the bearings to come out, you can use a little bit of WD-40 to loosen things up a little bit, and that works pretty good. With the removal of the last of the bearings, you'll feel the component free up. Now you should be able to gently slide out the metering selector. Now it's important to note here that we're going to be dealing with two different size bearings. We'll have two larger set point bearings and a lot of smaller retainer bearings. Next we'll remove the one-way check valve and we'll start by taking out the set screw and then all the ball bearings. Every once in a while you'll have a little difficulty getting all of the bearings to come out. You just have to keep working with it and use a little bit of WD-40 to make sure the bearings are freed up and eventually they'll all come out. As those last few bearings come out, we should be able to remove the one-way check valve. Now we'll want to take a few minutes here to thoroughly clean the one-way check valve. If you find that there's some dried concentrate inside the check valve, you can soak it in some salty water and you can clean it with a bottle brush or a toothbrush. Now it's absolutely critical that the one-way check valve be working properly. Just some concentrate or some watered-down concentrate is allowed to dry inside the one-way check valve. It could freeze up the moving parts of the check valve and if that happens, that will prevent any concentrate from entering the nozzle. Now if you suspect that you have dried concentrate inside your one-way check valve, the best way to inspect for this and to clean it out is to disassemble your proportioner. Now, while we have the check valve out, we can inspect the groove that the bearings sit in and we can inspect that for excessive wear. Alright, we're finished with the one-way check valve and now we can move on to the proportioner housing. We can start by inspecting the proportioner housing for damage and even though this proportioner and nozzle are pretty clean to begin with you can see that there's some, there's some dried concentrate on the inside and we'll need to remove that. As we're cleaning the proportioner housing we're going to want to inspect all the seals. There's a seal on the one-way check valve side and there's another seal on the metering selector side and there's also a gasket where the pickup tube connects into the proportioner. Okay the seals look good now let's take a look at the metering selector. This is another critical inspection point. If the 1 or 2 percent metering holes are blocked by dried concentrate, then the proportioner is simply not going to work right. Alright, before we reassemble the proportioner, we're going to want to clean the retainer bearings. And this is where it's nice to have a clean towel to work on. Now we're ready to reassemble the proportioner. The first thing we need to do is insert the metering selector just past the seal. Remember those larger bearings that I mentioned earlier? There are two of them and we want to place one on each of the holes that has a spring in it. These bearings serve as stop points in the grooves on the underside of the metering selector. Now we'll need to return the retainer bearings. We'll put those back in through the set screw hole. Once we finish that we're going to reinsert the set screw. 
It's important not to over tighten the set screw. The set screw's main function is to function as a plug and to hold in the retainer bearings. You might feel tempted to tighten the set screw until it feels tight. That's not necessary. And if the set screw is screwed in too far, it will interfere with the movement of the bearings. By rotating the metering selector as we tighten the set screw, we can verify that we haven't inserted the set screw too far. All right, we've got the metering selector reinstalled, and now we're just going to repeat the same process for the one-way check valve. Since we're just repeating the same process, we're going to move through this a little more quickly. I want to stress again that we don't want to over-tighten or thread in too far the set screw. Now that we're finished, we'll give the proportioner a final wipe, and then we'll rotate all the parts to make sure that they're moving properly and then we're ready to move on to the nozzle. We'll start off with the nozzle by inspecting the exterior for any obvious mechanical damage. Next we'll remove the tip of the nozzle and with that we'll have the first opportunity to see inside the venturi chamber. Next, we'll remove the set screw and the retainer bearings from the Venturi assembly. Pock nozzles are designed so that we can open up one side of the Venturi chamber, and that's what we'll do next. I'm going to use a pair of forceps to remove this threaded piece. The components that make up the interior of the Venturi assembly are made of plastic, so you want to use extreme caution so as not to damage them. Once again, this pock nozzle and proportion were pretty clean to begin with, but you can see that we have some concentrate inside the venturi chamber that we need to clean out. After performing the necessary cleaning, we can reinsert this portion of the venturi assembly. You should never have to force any of these plastic components. If you're having difficulty, it might just be better to stop. In contact thermogel, or your department thermogel technician for assistance. The last component to inspect is the nozzle's tip. We can remove the retaining screw with an Allen wrench and then gently pry the deflector out. It looks pretty clean in there, so I think we can reinsert the deflector without any additional cleaning. Last thing I want to check is that the dispersing ring rotates freely. As you can see here, this one's a little gummed up. Once again, a little bit of WD-40 works well to free things up. Now it's time to reassemble the nozzle. As we have done in the proportioner, we want to inspect the seals. The reassembly procedure for the nozzle is the same as the proportioner. We'll be replacing the retainer bearings and then inserting the set screw. Thermogel has made it pretty easy to disassemble and reassemble their nozzle. But if you're unsure about this procedure, it might be best to refer the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of your nozzle to your department's thermogel technician. Once we've finished reassembling our nozzle, we want to make sure that all the parts move freely. That's it! You've just successfully disassembled, cleaned, and reassembled your thermogel pock nozzle. This concludes this feature on the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of thermogel's pock nozzle and proportioner. You know, in the military, they have a saying which goes something like this, never take a weapon into battle that hasn't been proven. Or in other words, never take a weapon into battle that you can't trust. The same thing holds true with Thermogel's pock nozzle and backpack system. If you regularly and thoroughly stir your concentrate so as to make sure that all the polymers remain in solution. And if you take care when assembling your equipment to make sure that every connection point has a gasket, and that all of your connections are tight so as to prevent air leaks which could interfere with the ducting. And if you're absolutely certain that your nozzle and proportion are clean, then you can trust Thermogel's pock nozzle and backpack system. Thermogel is an amazing product and it's one of our best tools in the battle to prevent damage to homes and other property during wildland urban interface fires. This video is not intended to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to use Thermogel. You should refer to your Thermogel owner's manual for that information. If you have any questions or you'd like to contact us, you can do so through our website, which can be found at 
local935fire.org. That's local935fire.org. This video was filmed and edited with software and hardware provided by the San Bernardino County Professional Firefighters, Local 935. Thank you again for watching.